Uh, All right. Does everybody have a bulletin and a communion um, cup and bread? Everybody got. You're you're prepared for church with a bulletin and a. <laughs> Thank you. All this stuff. If not, one of the deacons will bring you something if you need it. All right. So welcome. It's great to be out here in the great outdoors to um, celebrate Sunday and our worship our Lord in the great outdoors. We'll look at our um, announcements to start with. Everything is um, going along with our uh, disciple players. Everything's Yes, sir. Moving along with that in our Wednesday night Bible study, we are prepared to start at 6. <laughs> Everybody that came knows what I'm talking about. We were running late, getting set up. And uh, Thursday, uh, Roger's uh, study on Romans is uh, going along, and we have, um, and if you're interested in helping the kids at uh, Fort Lewis at lunchtime. The sign-up sheets uh, are in the foyer, but not here. It's <laughs> back at the church. Um, let's see. All right. Any other announcements? Need to... Right. At, after communion, I'll be picking up uh, a communion. So don't worry. Don't get up. See yourself. I'll come around and pick it up for you, okay? All right. He's going to pick up the communion cups for you. Hey, Matt. Yeah. <laughs> well, you remember, we have a blood drive in two weeks. So uh, I'll start getting some flyers out, out for you. Uh, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's going to be tougher because uh, the hospital is paying people to get blood. And uh, so we, we need to get as much, uh, the word out as much as we can. Uh, Thinking about uh, those, yeah. those, God bless all you people who help me with the food and that. Let's hope we make David one hour back in the fall. People off the uh, summer vacation. Okay. Any other announcements? If not, we'll. Uh, oh, uh, the um, offering plate is up here in the front. If anybody wants to donate, and put it in the offering plate up here. Yeah, offering plates up here, and um, uh, any other? Uh, one more thing, uh, this is, uh, surgery might be postponed. Oh, okay. We'll find out tomorrow. Uh, they called uh, yesterday, uh, Friday, and they want her to see a cardiology before they do the surgery. Okay. So her surgery may be postponed. And um, in, uh, looking at her joys and concerns, um, any, any updates? Anything? The doctor said that Penelope should not need surgery oh. on her collarbone as long as the bone doesn't work its way through the skin. <laughs> okay. That's so encouraging. <laughs> I guess that is why they call it practicing. Yes, they just want to practice that. <laughs> Um, uh, any other any other uh, updates with our prayers all right if not we'll go to the Lord in prayer our Heavenly Father we are so thankful to be gathered here before you in the open air enjoying nature we're so thankful that we have this fellowship and friendship and ask that you continue to look over, watch over, protect, and heal all that's on our list, and to continue to be with each and every one of us, give us strength and good health, and um, continue to bless us in such a mighty way that you have, and ask that you be with us this morning, anoint this time together, anoint this service, and we do glorify you and worship you for you are our God and our Savior, our King. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Our 
call to worship. Lord, your beauty is all around us. We see your majesty in the flowers and trees. Campfire. We hear your voice in the songs of birds. We feel your loving spirit in the warm sunlight and gentle breeze. Touch, Touch us with your spirit and make, make us beautiful for you. Amen. Our uh, hymn of praise is for the beauty of the earth. <coughs>
So, can you imagine with all these trees that you were able to find all these different leaves? Okay? This is pretty. What color is that one? <laughs> Brown. Okay. Oh, mercy. Who did, did Mark get put this one up? I don't even think that counts. Okay. This one is really, really green and purple. Isn't that nice? Green. Green. Good. There's another brown one, but it's different than that brown one. These are very pretty leaves. And then we got a wet one. Okay, okay. Another green one, but it's a different shape. Look, look, one side brown, other side green. <coughs> uh oh. Problem. Oh, here's the rain. No, no. It's, it's somebody's trying to play bad music. Okay, uh, so what we're going to do is we're just going to try to remember how much we love God. God. How much we love the fact that he makes us all different. Okay? Now let me do it. Don't let me fall. Okay. Be careful. Thank you, baby. John. At least I got one gentleman in the church. Sky. There you go. Have a good week, honey. Say thank you. Is Let's prepare our hearts for prayer. Let's consider Psalms 96. 11 through 12. Let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice. Let the sea roar and all that fills it. Let the field exalt and everything in it. Then shall all the trees of the forest sing for joy. Let us bow. Our Heavenly Father, in the beginning of our time, your word brought light into darkness. Your hands shaped the clay that made us from the land. Your creativity exploded in colors and shapes and smells and your breath brought life to all creatures. As we worship here this morning in this open air, may we find you in this presence, in our presence here. As we enjoy hearing these birds sing, we know that they're singing praises to you. Help us to open our hearts to you that we might hear that still, small voice giving us direction, giving us inspiration, helping us to understand your word, understand your love and your peace and just enjoy your strength, your presence with us this morning. We need it, and we need you so much. Let us pray as Jesus taught us to pray. Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name.
to offer your bodies as living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. And if we ever find ourselves forgetting that the crucifixion was a deed, not just a doctrine, but it was really a human being, Jesus Christ, a carpenter from Nazareth that really hung on the cross. We never should forget that he was a human being and he did die for us, that we might live. As we remember his act of love, what can we surrender this morning in our hearts? What can we surrender to him as an act of love to glorify him? As we consider what he's done, as we take of the bread and the cup this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for being able to be here in the great outdoors that you created with the sun, the fresh air, the leaves. It's so beautiful. And we thank you for the sacrifice you made on the cross for us. For us. As we take the bread and the cup, we thank you for all our many blessings, the things we know about, and the ones that we do. Be with us and God, as we ask in your name. Amen. Cheese. Will you please take the bread with me? And let us take the cup together. Thank you. 
Our scripture today comes from Matthew 11, verses 25 and 26. At that time, Jesus said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and learned and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for this is what you were pleased to do. It's the word of the Lord. I can't help but think about how God uh, created the cycle of life in uh, when we sit, sit outdoors like this and think about you know this time of year fall everything is going to die and uh, it, it will look dead it'll be dormant but in the spring suddenly everything uh, is resurrected everything comes alive and um, so we're reminded to me when I'm outdoors I always think of the resurrection life and life eternal so I want to talk about Jesus's secret ambition that nobody really realized as he went about preaching the kingdom of God that's what the gospel tells us he went about preaching the kingdom of God and the truth about Jesus wasn't fully revealed until the resurrection. The resurrection was the seal and the confirmation of Jesus' saving power by the cross. This is why the Gospels don't really explain the resurrection. The resurrection is what explains the Gospels. The resurrection is the completion of the Incarnation. Jesus' resurrection is the one event in which the Messiah was raised from the dead and his body brought to life in order to demonstrate the complete work of redemption. Not only did Christ demonstrate his completion of redemption, but God also in power and might struck down death and total defeat. This is why Paul proclaims in Philippians, he says, I want to know, I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of sharing in his sufferings and becoming like him in his death and so somehow to attain the resurrection from the dead I think as Christians we do understand the resurrection together with the cross to be history's most important event the despair of all the past history is reversed by the resurrection the hope of all future history is enabled by the resurrection. It is, of all events, the most enlightening and important revelation of God in His plan of salvation. To understand the resurrection is to understand the meaning of history from then on forward. And that is why we proclaim, as the Scripture tells us, the Lord has risen. The Lord has risen indeed. Because that's our testimony. Without the resurrection, everything that we talk about is meaningless. Without the resurrection, it's the most important thing to us. It's what, what a wonderful miracle. When Christ rolled away that stone and walked out of that tomb, fulfilling God's first three appointments, as Moa did, his first three appointments, the feasts, the Passover. He is the slain, the lamb slain for all of mankind. And he is the unleavened bread, the manna from heaven that came down to man. He is the first fruits of the resurrection where he was he comes out of the tomb on Sunday, the feast of the first fruits, the first resurrection, that Sunday. That's why Sunday is really, we should just call Sunday Resurrection Day. <laughs> it is the day for us to remember and why we gather on Sundays. Let's reflect on what 
Christ accomplished in the resurrection. His life was physically renewed. His body was and spirit was reunited. Death became subject to his authority. He was exalted for his obedience and attained his new position at the right hand of the Father throne. His body became transfigured once and for all, the perfect, the perfect human being. How does all this translate into English for us, for us? It means that because of the resurrection, we can have eternal life. Of course, we know John eleven twenty five. 25, Jesus said, I am the resurrection and life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, yet shall they live. It means that we can live under the power of the Holy Spirit. Paul tells us in Ephesians, I pray that you will begin to understand the incredible greatness of his power for us who believe in him. This is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead and seated him in the place of honor at the right hand of God in the heavenly realm. That power is available to us. The resurrection power is available to us spiritually. The Holy Spirit lives in us, marks us as His. And one day, we'll experience our own resurrection. Again, Paul tells us in Corinthians, but the fact is that Christ has been raised from the dead. He has become the first of the great harvest of those who will be raised to life again, the first fruits. Everyone dies because all of us are related to Adam, the first man. But all who are related to Christ, the second Adam, will be given new life resurrected body this is the key to our victory in Christian life because we have been drawn into a union with Christ a oneness with him for he raised us from the dead along with Christ and we are seated with him in the heavenly realms all because we are one with Christ so we have those three promises receiving eternal life being spiritually empowered experiencing our own spiritual resurrection Jesus Christ shows us his perfect love for all of us when he bore those sins at Calvary. He conquered sin and died on the cross and he defeated the sting of death when he rose from the grave three days later. This is why we gather and rejoice today, why we meet on Sundays, because Christ is our rest. He is our Sabbath. Why we have we should rejoice every single day of the rest of our life, celebrating and remembering our Savior. Resurrection. The day Christ rolled away that stone with the powerful light of light. That He, and He encourages us and even commands us to share this message to all that we know, this good news of hope, that He is the resurrection and the life. So today and every day, remember Jesus' resurrection, the light of life defeated the darkness of the sin and death. And, and again, all along this three-year-long ministry, he had the secret ambition that nobody really knew what he was going to do, that he was going to go to the cross and do this for us, the secret ambition to save us and give us eternal life and oneness with him. The resurrection, again, explains the Gospels. So ask me how I know that Jesus lives. Because He lives within my heart. His Spirit lives in me and in you. Amen. 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 The army stuff. The big team. That's the right invitation to him, God, who touches earth with beauty.
pray for the food as opposed to a benediction. <laughs> so, so let's let's uh, bow and pray. Our Heavenly Father, we're so thankful to be able to gather here in fellowship and to recognize that you are God and we're not, and that we are so thankful that we have such a loving God who went to the cross for us and died and resurrected to give us the power to live. We're so thankful that we're able to gather here in freedom and thankful that we have this food to, to uh, strengthen us for your service. We're so thankful and ask that you bless this food as we gather here in your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 The East, the Army style.